Hey everybody, I am Tribal Instincts, and today I am checking out the Microsoft Mixed Reality Development Kit made by HP. All right, before we go any farther into this, should you buy this right now? No, absolutely not. Under no circumstances should anybody that is just watching this as a consumer go out and buy this. Like I already said, this is a development kit. This is not a final product. This is not even something that I think at the moment you will enjoy. That is not me saying that I don't think that this platform has promise, but you should not go and buy one of these things. As long as we've got that clear, let me go through and talk about what I like about this thing and what I don't like. So what is this thing? This is a new virtual reality headset by Microsoft, made by HP, and this is sort of a blending between their existing HoloLens and a more traditional virtual reality. HoloLens is focused on augmented reality, which is the ability for you to superimpose holograms on your real life space. Whereas this thing takes more of a VR approach, but it has some of the same functionality that the HoloLens does specifically. You have a house as your starting area, and you're able to pin your desktop applications to walls, and you're able to make it more of a home setting where you can have things all over the place. Unlike the existing Vive, Oculus, and PlayStation, who all rely on external devices to communicate and just coordinate where the device is, this guy has two cameras on the front of it. And so all of its positional tracking is based off of the stuff that's in here. Now that has some very cool perks and also some setbacks that I'll talk about in a minute. All right, I'm gonna talk about the comfort first. This thing is actually fairly comfortable. It is light, it is incredibly light, and it does a fairly decent job of holding onto your head. However, it is not very snug. So while it is comfortable, it's not the tightest fit. So whenever it's on there, it does feel a little bit loose. It does seem like HP took a cue from the HTC Vive in the fact that we all hate the foam padding. This has rubberized padding. What they got wrong though, is that it's not removable. This padding is stuck on there. It is actually glued in place. So cleaning this is possible. You don't have to worry as much about sweat getting into it. However, I don't want to like, you know, have a lot of solvents or water or whatever else, you know, running up around here whenever it's this close to the headset. So cool, congratulations. You got it right in terms of giving us a cleanable surface. However, you should have made this Velcro. While they got this right, this part is still foam. So it's like they learned half of the lesson, but they didn't decide to take it all the way. This is a pretty soft foam, very, very thin. I don't think like this is gonna reduce any field of view because your face is gonna go right up in this. There's, there's really nothing to that. But uh, this is gonna be absorbent, just like the HTC Vive covers that we all know and loathe whenever it comes to our nasty sweat getting soaked into it. Back strap, just like the Deluxe Audio strap, has a nice ratcheting feature to keep it in place. You can make it fairly wide. I think probably most people will be fairly comfortable in this. However, if your head is larger than mine, you're gonna, you're gonna run into some, some, some issues here if it's too much bigger. Now, I'm not sure if this particular feature is going to be in the consumer version or not, but it is fairly nice for developers being able to quickly lift this up and see your screen. That said, they probably should have made this stay up a little bit higher because as it is, you're only really able to see basically your keyboard and not your screen because it, you know, it likes to fall back down. In addition, you'll notice that while the headset is right here, it's relatively stable. Like I said, though, it does wave around a little bit. However, whenever this is up, the weight of this is no longer pressing against my face. So this is actively feeling like it's gonna fall forward. So while I appreciate the attempt, this was not very well thought out. From an optics perspective, both these use standard Fresnel lenses and behind them you have a 1440 by 1440 LCD versus I believe it's the 1080 by 1200 OLED that the Vive and the Oculus use. So you do get higher resolution. However, you are having reduced field of view. The HTC Vive and the Oculus have about 110 field of view. This has 95. So you get a sharper image, but a little bit more of a tunnel vision. On the outside, you have these two cameras. Now, I haven't seen any way to actually have that camera pass through to what you're seeing so far. I think this is just used for your positional tracking. I could be wrong, but I haven't seen any way of getting that camera on the inside yet. I will talk more about the quality of these tracking devices in just a bit. One last thing on the headset itself, this is where you plug in a headset. Now, I find this position to be absolutely absurd. I wish it was on the top or on the side or just anywhere else, really. This is really weird. It hangs down, it gets in your way, uh, and I just don't like it. Now, this is important. You need a headset with a microphone because inside the mixed reality platform, you have integration with the Microsoft's Cortana, which is their voice assistant. 
And as we're making our way towards the computer, this is the only connection point that you have into the headset itself. This has a bracket, which I'm not actually sure what port kind this is, but this takes one cable, you plug it in here, and on your other end, you have HDMI and USB 3.0. Which leads us to the computer. Whenever you plug in this headset into a Windows 10 OS that has the creator's update, stuff just starts working. So I have to say, from a setup perspective, this thing takes the cake like there's no comparison, okay? For the Vive, for Oculus, for PlayStation, there's setup that you have to do. For this, you plug it in, Windows does its automatic driver setup, and then it just it starts opening up the calibration tool where it just tells you to do something similar to the HTC Vives or any of them when it you know tells you to walk around your room to set up your room boundaries. But this thing, I mean, it just starts. You don't have to install any software on your own. It does it all in the background. All right, and then we get into the actual experience. And I'm only going to go into basically your first time experience whenever you start this thing up because I'm really just covering the high-level stuff here. In a later video, I'll be going into the applications that I found for this thing uh, and the development experience, just sort of getting a deeper understanding of it. This is really just talking about the headset itself and the first experience that I have with the application. All right, so after you've gone through the calibration and you've marked your room boundaries, you are put into your Microsoft Home, kind of like Steam VR Home, but the Microsoft version. From there, you're able to walk around, you're able to teleport around, you're able to attach what they call holograms, which are basically just kind of really crappy 3D scans of uh, people and objects and other various things. Now, what is cool though, is they are animations. These are actual real recordings, 3D recordings of people doing things. So I kind of forgive them for their low resolution. This is not something that I would use on a regular basis, but hey, it's still kind of cool and it kind of shows where things could be in the future. Apart from those gimmicks, you are able to attach your application windows to your walls or floating in the air, however you want it to be. You're able to have, you know, YouTube up on one side. You're able to have, you know, your sports stats or whatever else, something going over there. You're able to customize your house pretty much however you want. That includes the furniture. Everything is movable. It's, you know, you can grow it, you can shrink it, you can do whatever you want. So it is actually a fairly robust system for kind of moving your house around. And it will be cool to see how they expand on that. All right, now that we've talked about sort of the frivolous stuff, let's talk about the meats of it. These two lenses, this is what powers the entire tracking solution of this device. Here we go. So I've got good news and bad news. Good news is, like I said, the setup is fantastic. You really don't have to do anything. It works very, very well at the very get-go. However, it is not nearly as accurate as what we'd expect from the HTC Vive or even the Oculus. The tracking is a limitation. Now this is not, I don't, I, I don't think that this is targeted for like really crazy games where you're gonna be moving your head all around. And so for slow movements, it's actually very good. However, do not expect to be able to, you know, juggle or do anything else in this. For one, you don't even have hands in this or any controllers. There's some coming out later on this year, but as of right now, you have no hands. You're only using a mouse or like an Xbox One controller. I have no idea how the controllers are gonna be tracked. Is it going to be using the optics or is there gonna be some other device that tracks it. I'm really actually kind of concerned about that because if it's using these cameras only, you won't be able to track behind your head, which is kind of silly. Kind of, you know, removes any bow and arrow game as an option for one. Okay, I guess at this point that probably wouldn't be a bad idea because half the games on the Steam store are bow and arrow games. Now, I know this won't be an issue for most people. However, tracking in my room is is really bad. Uh, basically, if I turn this way, tracking goes away because I have green, nothing but green, and it doesn't have anything for the image recognition in here to latch onto. Whenever I face that direction, I have my computers, I have computer peripherals, everything all over the place. Tracking is much more stable. However, whenever I was going through the room setup, it tells you to walk around with it at your waist level. And so I, you know, did some turning. And as soon as I turned this way, it lost all tracking. So I learned fairly quickly that I have to track, or I have to like set up my room boundary by moving my headset around like this in the circle. So for all you people out there that like recording your stuff, don't put a green screen behind you. This just won't work. All right, so that's the bones of the thing. I think that this is cool. I think it has promise. I am concerned about the platform in general because if they make this like sort of an exclusive thing to the Microsoft Store, we're gonna have some problems. If I can't play some other games that are like on Steam VR, which I have seen no comments regarding if it's going to support that or not. However, if this is its own thing, they better come bring in some really, really cool things that are completely different than what we get. Like this would need to focus exclusively on like productivity apps and they've got to do it right. I, so I'm, I'm really concerned about this entire platform. This again though is a development kit. So the concerns that I have with this that say that I would never play a game in this thing, like the tracking uh, 
and you know the overall comfort in terms of how snug it is on my head, I, if they don't fix those things, this is probably not going to be something that I really ever actually use. However, with the increased field of view, text is a little bit better, and with how light it is, it's a little bit more you know comfortable for me to stay into it for a while. So if they make this thing to where I can actually have like a proper virtual desktop where I'm actually able to potentially even program in VR, this could have its own separate use case. As it is, though. I don't know, guys. We'll have to wait and see what comes out of the actual consumer version. As it is right now for this thing, I don't see too much coming out of it. Now, that is not my final word on this. That is just my first impressions after getting it out and just plugging it in and just you know playing around with it. I am going to be diving into this over the next few weeks whenever I have more time to figure out what this could potentially be used for outside of the things that the Vive is used for. For one, this thing was only 350 and that makes this a lot cheaper. And this is for a development kit. Typically, Microsoft you know, prices their development kits higher. So potentially, maybe we'll get a consumer kit that is in the sub $200 price range. That could be cool in its own right. Because from what I've seen so far, this is a huge step up from something like Gear VR or <laughs> God forbid Google Cardboard. So as an entry thing, this may be okay depending on what applications come out with it and how usable it is with existing hardware or software. All right, but for today, I am done here. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button below. If you didn't, hit the downvote button and tell me what I can do to make these videos better. And if you want to see more, hit subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.